I didn't feel like going to the mall or hanging out with my friends. I didn't want to talk on the phone. I couldn't really talk, actually. Sounds and noises were um, becoming too much. We were up at all hours of the night um, trying to make sure that she was OK. I remember walking, like going up the stairs, and I remember feeling like someone was behind me. And then I would hear things, like not loud, like, but they would be there. It was weird to go from being this person I've been my whole life to somebody totally different. Mental illness is serious. It's something that happens to a lot of young people. And if you can prevent the onset of psychosis, you may be able to intervene to prevent that kind of disability and maybe even reverse it a little bit. Portland, Maine is a small seacoast city. It prides itself on a rich New England history and relaxed pace. Yet like the rest of the country, it cannot escape the harsh reality of serious mental illness. But something different is happening in this community. An experimental program is underway to recognize mental illness early and minimize its impact on young people. Dr. William McFarlane is founder and principal investigator of PEER, the Portland Identification and Early Referral Program at Maine Medical Center. The PEER program is an attempt to alter the way Portland, Maine at least, deals with schizophrenia and all of the psychotic uh, disorders, but through early identification rather than better treatment after people get ill. 3% of the population will experience psychosis sometime during their lives. Psychosis is a loss of contact with reality, and surprisingly, the first warning signs often occur during adolescence and young adulthood. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's me or if it's a phase or if, you know, what it is. I'm just generally kind of confused and... Um... Peer's novel approach seeks to get young people into treatment at the earliest stages of mental illness. The early treatment of schizophrenia is important because in a sense, when you develop schizophrenia, you drive off a cliff. So imagine you, know, you could stop the process that's already underway. You're driving down the road toward a psychotic episode, toward schizophrenia, and you either drive off the cliff or you don't. Well, like my stress is stressing him out. The peer program is an attempt to take all of what we've learned about early psychosis and put it into practice. These are brain-based symptoms and they're treatable. It's a community education effort, it's a treatment program, and it's a research effort. Dr. William Cook is studying the effectiveness of the peer treatment model. The research that we're doing is designed to determine whether it's exactly like any other illness, such as cancer, that if you catch it early, then you have a much better outcome than if it's only treated later. We're all working on the assumption that the earlier you catch it, the better. But how do you identify a young person who exhibits early symptoms that can be so subtle, people close to them might not even notice? The peer approach emphasizes targeted community outreach, training thousands to recognize early warning signs of mental illness and encouraging them to call peer so a diagnosis can be made. We look for typically a change in functioning or a drop in functioning. So as a teacher, you would notice a child who was maybe grades were going down a little bit, a young person who's uh, isolating more from their friends, keeping to themselves. A child. We do a lot of connecting with schools, um, primarily with social workers, guidance counselors, nurses. We find that teachers will often notice through a young person's writing or through their performance in class that, you know, there are changes occurring. So if I have a kid in my class, I don't have training in this, so I'm not going to go to that kid or their parent or something to say something. What, what would I do? Connect with the social worker. And what we'd hope is that we'd get the referral from you sooner so that we can start helping the young person and family. 
Peer instructs educators to be on the lookout for classic symptoms of psychosis, including feeling paranoid, difficulty speaking and understanding others, hearing and seeing things that are not there, feeling disconnected from others, losing interest in everyday activities, and getting special messages from TV or radio. We've educated almost the entire professional group in the schools and in the colleges and many of the doctors so that if the family goes to anybody and says, what's wrong with Junior, they are very likely to get an answer back that if that's the story, you should call the peer program. Today, most referrals come from community members who work closely with young people, such as Ann Conley, a nurse practitioner at the University of Southern Maine. Tiffany, a university student, sought Anne's help when she began experiencing disturbing behavior changes early in her freshman year. Tiffany was referred to me by one of the counselors in university counseling here with some symptoms that could have possibly been attributed to major depression but were just a little bit unusual and a little bit different than what you might typically see. I was experiencing some sadness, um, um, withdrawn from people, not being so social. I wanted to do schoolwork, but then all of a sudden like, I'd cry. I wasn't being me. I was having some symptoms of like, you know, seeing shadows and figures, and then I would hear things, like not loud, like, but they would be there. Conley credits the knowledge she gained during a peer training session for helping her to identify Tiffany's symptoms. I think she may have some early symptoms of psychosis. Just kind of want you to... What was new for me as a healthcare provider was how very, very subtle these symptoms can be. And what the peer program did was elucidate for me, just make it much clearer that it was okay to just simply have a suspicion and to let somebody screen that student for me. Today, Tiffany and other young people benefit from peers' comprehensive treatment and support. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Jeff. I'm here to see Sarah. They just make sure I'm taking my medication. I see Nurse Ed, I see Dr. Meyer, and they just are wondering how I'm doing. You know, like how am I feeling? What are any side effects? I talk to Sarah about, you know, anything personal. She's kind of like my counselor, you know. She's just there for me. It's been up and down, but nothing to be worried about. Yeah, what would those stressors be that are going on this month? Um. Family issues, um, relationship issues, pretty much that type of thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of the treatment we offer to people is designed to stop the symptoms as quickly as possible. We intervene at the brain level with medication. We work with the family to change the immediate psychosocial environment. We work with the school to alter the educational program so the person can stay in school. Tiffany was able to get back on track and stay in school. Today, she is considering a career in nursing. I started going to exercise more. I did much better in my classes. And then I was starting to realize, well, hey, you know, I'm doing much better and I'm feeling great. You know, not great, great, but I'm feeling much, much better. I would say that she's much more spontaneous much more social. She's pledging a sorority and she's taking tennis and she is wanting to go out to social events at school, which was very different from how she was. Have you had the feeling that she might not actually exist? No. I feel that we did really stave off a psychotic episode for her. And I think the important thing also is that we've continued to monitor those symptoms and she knows what those warning signs are for her. The Denisons are a warm, loving family who support each other and enjoy spending time together. 
but they were not prepared for the day when their world turned upside down. Six years ago, their daughter, a vivacious, outgoing 14-year-old, began to experience sudden, mysterious, and terrifying behaviors. Megan was having a difficult time speaking, um, let alone functioning. She was uh, paranoid, um, felt like uh, people were watching her. I didn't feel like going to the mall or hanging out with my friends. I couldn't really talk, actually. I just went through myself. We were scared. We, we didn't know what was wrong. We had a, a serious problems. We needed help. Faced with the biggest challenge of their lives, the Denisons turned to their pediatrician, who referred them to Peer. They immediately received help, including individual and family counseling. The Peer program is unique because it involves a very close working relationship with the young person and with their family. How's the math class? <laughs> Good. As clinicians, we understand treatments, we know how to do therapy. However, experience has taught us that families have a vast amount of power and knowledge about who they are, what works in their family, and also have great influence over each other. Family involvement is central to the peer prevention effort. It not only helps maintain family functioning, it teaches families how to buffer children from unwanted stresses that might impact their recovery effort. We had kind of talked about and agreed that he'd pretty much go to school close by, and now he's thinking he might want to go away to school. Half of all peer clients participate in multifamily group meetings, or MFGs. I really want to get a good job, so I want to find a college that will really give me background experience. It's not that I don't want my kids to go away to mm -hmm. school, but I feel like with his disability, it's going to be a lot for him. We don't want him to fail, you We're know. Failing. We've had a couple failures that, that turned out to be excellent successes in the long run. That was my, one of my major concerns for Harlan, and we made the decision for him to try out the summer program, and that was our... There's a lot of cross-parenting yeah, okay. that happens, and it's kind of a beautiful thing to watch. You can't have that kind of impact with a, with a single family in your office. Let's make that into a suggestion. What can they do in the interim to improve or increase their confidence about his ability to be independent. MFGs take a incredibly complex and challenging situation and reduce it down to very practical, pragmatic, problem-solving and incremental steps that guide a family and individual through this process of recovery. <laughs> the Denisons participated in the multifamily group for five years. Not only did I make friends, but it was comforting to see other families going through the same thing. And it gave us tools to deal with not only the children's issues, but with our own issues as parents. Um, and helped us get through probably the worst, the worst time of our lives. The peer program offers hope to Portland families during their darkest hours. Thanks to a steady stream of referrals and clients' willingness to be a part of this pioneering program, many promising young lives are protected and restored. The effectiveness of the program is something we're studying, but at the moment, um, what we do know is there are many, many fewer young people going to the hospital in the Portland area with schizophrenia or psychotic episodes. According to preliminary data, 86% of peer clients have avoided having a psychotic episode, and only 6% have developed schizophrenia. Building on these positive outcomes, the peer program is now expanding to help young people in other communities around the country. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has committed more than $14 million to support the development of new sites in Queens and Long Island, New York, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Sacramento, California, and Salem, Oregon. The peer program has really brought back the me. I call my period now back to Tiffany. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I want to do, but 
I know that I'm gonna be okay, so that's really all that really matters. The early intervention that she received, the early treatment, I truly believed has prevented her from having a major mental illness. It was a miracle that the program was here. I'm just so thankful that it was and grateful for what they did for her family and gave us our daughter back. Hello, buddy. Oh. She is just a vibrant, beautiful young woman who is living her life and I have no doubt that she will just be all that she can be.